Hey everyone, it is John here, and I will be bringing you a, another book from my, or out of my favorites. Um, it's, I, or I am going to put it down between um, the Redwall series and this series, um, it's a, or book, I guess. It'll start, and then I'll continue with that series. This one will be a series. It will have to be read in order. The Redwall is not, but whoever watches right, or my recordings and stuff, or this, or whatever, vote. And um, the other one is Salamander Strone, like Salamander, except um, you had Strone instead of the Mander, I guess. Um, this book is going to be an alternate history. Um, it is taking place in World War II. It is Into the Storm. This is a much more popular book. It's by Taylor Anderson. This is the book I couldn't remember in my first video. If I even mentioned the other books I'd be doing and stuff. Oh, excuse me. Um, if I can't remember if I said so, but I think I believe in my first bit I said that I would be doing or three books that you could choose from. I decided not to do the other one yet because I don't have all the books. Um, I don't have all the books for this series yet though. I have like I have three I have five or six of these books though. So um and this takes about half a year to do. Um, probably more. Um, since I'm going to be doing it for you guys, and the main reason is because I only am able to do this. For some reason, our internet is temperamental, and I only get it upload every now and then. So um, that's why I do them in great quantities. Like I'll have a whole, or I'll have two or three chapters done in a day. This is going to be a one chapter a day thing because um, in the third book, second or third book. There are four chapters, and it is about the same length as this book, and it's about 300 or 400 pages. The first chapter is page uh, one, obviously, I guess. That makes sense. The second chapter starts on... Hello, second chapter. That's chapter four. Three. Two. The first chapter ends on page 38. So this will be a three video um, chapters. So let us begin. Um, it takes in place, um, for those of you history fanatics, especially in World War II Navy, we are going to be taking place in, um, one sec. We will be taking place in the, around Borneo, I believe. Um, but yeah, I'll also be showing you another map in this book. Er, and then also, later on, they capture a map from an enemy. I'll be showing you that when they, uh, or I'll be telling you more about that when we get to there, which is a while. Um, it's very interesting, though. Um, and I'll, or, I'll read the back, because it's not as, or it's more, it's in less alternate history until second or third chapter. Um, another world, another war. Pressed into service in World War II, USS Walker, a great war error destroyer, finds itself in full retreat from pursuit by Japanese battleships. Its captain, Lieutenant Commander Matthew Patrick um, Reedy, heads Walker into a squall for cover. They emerge somewhere else. Familiar landmarks appear, but the water teems with vicious monstrous or monstrous fish and there appear to be dinosaurs grazing on shore. Matt and his crew have entered an alternate world, and they are not alone. Humans have not evolved, but two other species have, and they are at war. With its weaponry, Walker could tip the balance of power. Matt and his crew must decide which species they will support, because the side they choose will be victorious. Um, and the book list, um, I don't know who they are exactly, but book list says... Outstanding, non-stop action. And then there, I think, is a few more. Um, Publishers Weekly says, Anderson expands on familiar concepts with high-tension battles and skillful descriptions of period attitudes and dialogue. Outstanding, non-stop action, extremely high-level achievement, and both world-building and characterization is also is the rest of the book list. And then there's a few more, but I only have, uh, you know, I only have about 10 minutes left, so I'm going to start reading. Chapter 1. They were running. There was no other word for it. No comfort comforting infamous to make this 
thing less sharp. In fact, it seemed impossible to wring the slightest sense of purpose from the confusion. Privation, privation terror, and bone-numbing weariness they'd endure, endured since the very day the war began on December 7th. Now three months later, they were running away. Limping might be the better term, and they hadn't even had a chance to lick their wounds. The tired men and elderly ships of destroyer squadron Desron 29 had hurled themselves repeatedly at the placeable juggernaut that was the Japanese Imperial Navy. While their numbers were ruthless, slashed, were ruthlessly slashed by disaster and dis or disrepair, it was a tragically tragical or trag sorry, there are a lot of big words, I'm not sure why I can't say this word tragically um lops I did content. A feeble gesture of defiance against overwhelming odds. In the end, a gesture was all it had been. Now all that remained was to flee, and it was probably too late. Lieutenant Cat or Lieutenant Commander Matthew Patrick Reedy, USNR UNSR the captain of USS Walker stood on the starboard bridge wing and tried to maintain at least a semblance of dignity in his rumbling and his rumpled and sweat stained shirt. Move that off there so I don't accidentally stop it. Um, where'd it go? So stained shirt. His left hand clutched his hat to his head against the thirty knot breeze while his right tried to keep the half-filled mug of lukewarm coffee from slopping onto his uniform. Red-rimmed eyes squinted from what was normally an almost embarrass embarrassingly boyish face, but at the moment a general covering of brown stubble and a fatigue-slackened expression made him look older than his thirty-two years. Not quite thirty-six hours earlier, he and his exhausted crew had participated in the largest surface action of the war to date, the Battle of the Java Sea. For once, the forces were evenly matched in numbers, if not quantity or quality, and they thought they'd have a had a chance. But from the beginning, nothing went right. The battle finally ended sometime in the night with the ruthless slaughter of virtually the entire force under Admiral Dorman's command. While the enemy grew ever stronger, the scattered allies were picked off in ones and twos. Actually, I guess it is kind of alternate history. I mean, there were a few losses in the naval wars with Japan, but they make Japan sound like America, continue, or growing stronger. It's weird. Walker wasn't there when the poor old Hudson and the staunch, staunch Perth were surrounded and hammered to the bottom. All the, destroyer, all the destroyers had been ordered to Surabay, Surabaya, however you pronounce it, to refuel and had thus been granted a short reprieve. Edwards, Alden, Ford, and Paul Jones departed for Australia as soon as their bunkers were full, and nobody knew if they'd made it through the gauntlet or not. The remaining destroyers were order, or ordered to wait for the British cruiser Exeter the only capital ship to survive the battle, and escort her to Celion after she completed temporary repairs. Matt spent that day of short intermission sending out parties to scrounge anything they might use, but little turned up when the bottom out or bombed out remains of the Dutch naval yard. The searchers discovered some belted thirty cal eighty rounds of eighty rounds of eighty rounds of or inch fifty. Oh, okay. Searchers so discovered some belted thirty cal, eight eighty rounds of four inch fifty for the main guns, two condemned torpedoes, a little food. It wasn't much. All the while, emergency repairs to Walker were underway. Even if Matt had found to the time, the time he couldn't have slept through the racket. Now standing on the bridge wing, he allowed a huge yawn to escape and hoped it made him look calm instead of just worn out. The morning sun was bright, and the beauty of the vast, calm, almost violet sea was marred only by the distant hump hump of Bowen 
Bowen Island, and the tiny cluster of American and British destroyers guarding Exeter's wound, wounded flanks. Little battle, little or bleh, I am doing bad today. Like battle weary army ants escorting their injured queen to a new home. As far as Matt knew, he was looking at all that remained of the Allied forces in America, British, Dutch, Australia, or ABDA defense area. He knew they'd been the last ones out of the tangled mass of wreckage and how of sunken holes that Surabe, Surabaya, or however Java had become. ABD, ABDA floats initial force was composed of two heavy cruisers, seven light cruisers, 23 destroyers, and about 30 submarines, and assorted support vessels. Now all that was left were three battered Great Great War vintage U.S. four stacker destroyers, one British destroyer encounter, or one British destroyer encounter, and the badly damaged heroine of the River Plate HMS Exeter. The massive Japanese fleet had destroyed or chased off the rest of their comrades. Now had them. Ugh, I'm doing bad. The massive Japanese fleet that had, that destroyed or chased off the rest of their comrades now had them alone to concentrate on. USS Pope DD or DD twenty or two twenty five and HMS Encounter screened Exeter's starboard side while USS Mahon. D or DD-102, and Matt's own walker, DD-106, or 163, screen to port. And I, I can't, or I know um, what port, or which side's port, and which side's um, starboard, but I cannot remember, really, for some reason. Um, he glanced up at the lookout, standing in the little tube near the top of the map, or of the mast. Rodriguez, electrician, electrician's mate, third class, appeared transfixed. Staring through heavy binoculars at a point far astern. From where he stood, Matt couldn't see anything yet, but he knew the t the two Japanese heavy cruisers and the destroyers, or destroyer that had pursued them since oh seven hundred hours, were still behind them. Rodriguez could see their smoke, and they were getting closer. When they slipped out of survey the night before, they intended to run the Sude. Suda straight into the Indian Sea, and made a dash for Salion. Blocked by the enemy, they reversed course across the Java Sea to run east along the Borneo coast. Their quick about face gained them breathing room, but the enemy cruisers launched observation planes. Two circled even now, high above and beyond reach of their meager anti-aircraft defenses. All they could do was watch while the planes kited lazily overhead and reported their progress to every Japanese ship within range of their radios. Mm. Mm, I should be able to finish. The convoy was limited to 27 knots by Exeter's damage, but Matt knew Walker couldn't steam much faster herself. The daily Lydian of okay of mechanical casualties plaguing his ancient ship read more like a shipyard inventory than a morning report. Pope and Mahon were in no better shape. The stress of constant seeming and frequent combat, in addition to ordinary wear and tear, had placed a heavier strain on Walker's machinery and equipment than she'd endured in all her 23 years of service. Oh god, our cat's going to get sick. If you start hearing something like wheezing, it's the cat. Him. He's evil. One sec. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop right there. We got, we made three pages. I know it doesn't seem like much, but that's all we did. I mean, look at how small the writing is. It's the only back part, or that's the only part that backfires. It'll take me a whole year to do this um, one book, and there's seven, eight, maybe even nine. So, I'll be... Over 22 before I finish this. So, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I love both books. You can pick this. You can pick Redwall. Redwall will only take me a little while. Um, And then I could work on Warriors and all that, but it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to influence you. I'm just giving the facts.
thank you. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next. Or um, right after this, I'm gonna start a new one. Bye bye.